New eToic actual test for listening. Test 1. Listening test. In the listening test, you will be asked to demonstrate how well you understand spoken English. The entire listening test will last approximately 45 minutes. There are four parts, and directions are given for each part. You must mark your answers on the separate answer sheet. Do not write your answers in the test book. Part 1. Directions. For each question in this part, you will hear four statements about a picture in your test book. When you hear the statements, you must select the one statement that best describes what you see in the picture. Then find the number of the question on your answer sheet and mark your answer. The statements will not be printed in your test book and will be spoken only one time. Look at the example item below. Now listen to the four statements. A. She's reviewing some notes. B. She's writing a letter. C. She's reading a newspaper. D. She's looking through a book. Statement D. She's looking through a book. Is the best description of the picture, so you should select answer D and mark it on your answer sheet. Now part one will begin. Number one. Look at the picture marked number one in your test book. A. The bicycles are on display. B. The bicycles are parked outdoors. C. The cyclists have stopped at the traffic light. D. The cyclists are riding in a line. Number 2. Look at the picture marked number 2 in your test book. A. They've stopped in front of a shop window. B. They are washing the windows. C. The man is rowing a boat on the water. D. The boats are tied together with rope. Go on to the next page. Number 3. Look at the picture marked number 3 in your test book. A. Sale items are displayed outside the store. B. Money is being taken from the cash register. C. There are cabinets under the counter. D. The drawers are closed. Number 4. Look at the picture marked number 4 in test book. A. He is alone in the art gallery. B. He is painting the walls of the gallery. C. He is looking at blueprints. D. He is taking a photograph of some artworks. Number 5. Look at the picture marked number 5 in your test book. A. Two men are racing their bicycles through the park. B. Some people are sitting on the benches. C. A man is feeding the birds by hand. D. There's a grassy area beside the path. Number 6. Look at the picture marked number 6 in your test book. A. He is watching fish. B. He is fishing at the water's edge. C. He is dipping his toes in the water. D. He is repairing fishing equipment. Go on to the next page. Number 7. Look at the picture marked number 7 in your test book. A. He is watching a slideshow. B. He is tearing up sheets of paper. C. He is examining some documents. D. He is pointing to charts on the desk. Number 8. Look at the picture marked number 8 in your test book. A. The women are polishing the floor. B. The women are selecting books from the shelves. C. The women are packing dolls into a box. D. 
The women have covered their head. Number 9. Look at the picture marked number 9 in your test book. A. The boats are tied to the dock. B. The boats are resting between the trees. C. The boats have been caught in a storm. D. The boats have been taken out of the water. Number 10. Look at the picture marked number 10 in your test book. A. The chairs are on the table. B. The chairs are unoccupied. C. The chairs have all been moved away from the table. D. There are chairs on either side of the table. Go on to the next page. Part 2. Directions. You will hear a question or statement and three responses spoken in English. They will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Select the best response to the question or statement and mark the letter A, B, or C on your answer sheet. For example, you will hear, Where is the meeting room? You will also hear, A. To meet the new director. B. It's the first room on the right. C. Yes, at 2 o'clock. The best response to the question, where is the meeting room, is choice B. It's the first room on the right. So B is the correct answer. You should mark answer B on your answer sheet. Now let us begin with question number 11. Number 11. What would you like to see? A. There's a long line. B. Sure, let's go see it. C. How about a documentary? Number 12. How did you hear about this job opening? A. I read about it on the Internet. B. I'm open to anything. C. I haven't heard from them yet. Number 13. Why don't you come on holiday with us? A. I don't have any. B. Will you come with us? C. Sure, where are you going? Number 14. When is the game supposed to start? A. The ticket cost $25. B. In five minutes. C. She plays very well. Number 15. Are you going to work early tomorrow? A. Yes, at 7 o'clock. B. I still haven't found a job. C. I'll stop in tomorrow. Number 16. Who is going to be leading the investigation? A. I hope not. B. Mrs. Berkeley, I think. C. I think we are leading. Number 17. That's a new car, isn't it? A. Of course you will. B. Yes, I bought it last week. C. I don't have a car. Number 18. I think Henry is a great team leader. A. There are five players. B. Yes, I'll go later. C. Yes, he's very good. Number 19. Where's the nearest bathroom? A. Sorry, I can't find the room. B. There's one down the street. C. Yes, it's quite near. Number 20. K 
Can we walk to the restaurant or should we take the bus? A. No, a one way ticket. B. Okay, let's eat out tonight. C. I think we should take the bus. Number 21. I'm not sure I can carry all these books by myself. A. Wait, I'll give you a hand. B. Add them together. C. I think it will fit in the box. Number 22. Isn't the supervisor a bit late? A. Yes, he should be here by now. B. Yes, it is cold in here. C. Maybe tomorrow afternoon. Number 23. When does the conference end? A. He hasn't registered yet. B. I think so. C. Next week, I think. Number 24. Which one is the key to the main office? A. I'll show you how to get there. B. The big one. C. I'll give you a key. Number 25. Why was the event cancelled? A. Because the organizers couldn't get funding. B. I'll be there for sure. C. No, we should get one. Number 26. Do you want to sit on the patio or inside? A. I'll have a coffee. B. Let's go outside. C. Yes, I think I can. Number 27. Weren't we supposed to meet this afternoon? A. Yes, I'm opposed to it. B. I met him this afternoon. C. Yes, but I had trouble with my boss. Number 28. Have you finished watching the film I lent you? A. As soon as I finish. B. I lent him some money. C. Yes, I'll give it back soon. Number 29. How big is your basement? A. Big enough for 50 people. B. It's around the corner. C. Yes, it should be fine. Number 30. Who does this backpack belong to? A. It can't be. B. It's probably Susan's. C. Yes, I think so. Number 31. Didn't Mac work in the research department last year? A. Please don't mention it. B. Yes, but he was fired. C. I prefer the publishing department. Number 32. This is Dr. Randolph's office, right? A. I can't tell you that. B. I like Dr. Michael. C. No, go down the hall. Number 33. Don't you want to go out for lunch? A. It was last night. B. I'll be ready in a few minutes. C. He didn't like it. Number 34. Why was there so much work today? A. It needs to be replaced. B. We received a new order. C. I'll do it myself, thanks. Number 35. Where can I pay for these books? 
A. Yes, it's quite a good read. B. B. Please stand in the line right over there. C. You should get a refund first. Number 36. Excuse me, I don't see price tag on this sweater. A. Let me check that for you. B. Just take it. C. There are five. Number 37. Could I give you a call if I need some help? A. Let's meet on Tuesday. B. I'd be glad to help you. C. Just tell him I have a few questions. Number 38. Do you want me to Princeton Drive or Smithers Lane? A. I really don't know which is faster. B. About an hour's drive at the most. C. No, I don't think you should. Number 39. When do you usually go for lunch? A. I saw it today. B. Around noon. C. Yes, we had a good meal. Number 40. Can I please look at the archive materials? A. You'll have to wait until the supervisor returns. B. It looks fine to me. C. I'll be in there until this afternoon. Part 3. Directions. You will hear some conversations between two people. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speakers say in each conversation. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The conversations will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Questions 41 through 43 refer to the following conversation. Welcome to the Northwest Film Festival Volunteer Services. How may I help you? I have a one o'clock appointment with Mr. Jack Barnes. Please hold on while I call up to the ninth floor for Mr. Barnes. May I tell him who's calling? Yes, my name is Lindsay Nielsen. I'm calling to reschedule a volunteer interview. Number 41. Where does this conversation probably take place? Number 42. What floor does Mr. Barnes work on? Number 43. Why does the woman want to speak with Mr. Barnes? Questions 44 through 46 refer to the following conversation. Mr. Davidson, this is Rachel Charade from Super Travel. I'm calling to see if you're still interested in purchasing an around-the-world ticket. I just wanted to remind you that today is the last day it's available. Oh yes, thanks for calling, Miss Charade. How late are you open? Can I maybe call you back as I am in class at the moment? Sure, we'll be open until 8. Don't forget though, tomorrow we'll be too late to get this special discounted ticket. All right, I'll call right after class around 5 p.m. Number 44. Who's Mr. Davidson talking to? Number 45. Why does the, does the woman call Mr. Davidson? Number 46. When does Mr. Davidson say he will call the woman back? Go on to the next page. Questions 47 through 49 refer to the following conversation. It's almost time to open. We still need someone to clean up the cash register counters. Where have you been? I've been mopping up aisle 5. It was still sticky from the steak that fell during last night's shift. 
Oh, okay, thanks. Can you do me a favor? Can you ask Tom to help you clean the counter so that you can get finished faster? No problem. I'll go get him right away. Number 47. Where most likely are the speakers? Number 48. What is the woman concerned about? Number 49. What will the man probably do next? Questions 50 through 52 refer to the following conversation. Hi, Sonny. We talked about going to the flamenco guitar performance tonight. Do you still want to go? Oh, no. I just remembered that I have to pick up my boyfriend from the train station. He's coming back from visiting his mother in Dutton. It's a long trip to the station, so I don't think I'll be back in time for the performance. Oh, don't worry about that. The musicians usually play until past midnight. Why don't you two meet us at the club afterwards? OK, that's a great idea. I'll call him now to see if he's up for going out tonight. Number 50. What are the speakers mainly discussing? Number 51. Who is Sonny expecting at the train station? Number 52. What will Sonny do next? Questions 53 through 55 refer to the following conversation. Excuse me, I received this dress as a Mother's Day present last week. However, it doesn't quite fit. Could I exchange it for a smaller size? It shouldn't be a problem, as long as you have the original receipt. Oh, no, I don't have the receipt. It's a gift from my husband, and I didn't ask him for the receipt. Oh, I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience, but I'm afraid that we can't exchange it for you until you bring in a receipt. Number 53. When did the woman receive the dress? Number 54. What is suggested about the dress? Number 55. What does the man ask for? Questions 56 through 58 refer to the following conversation. Hello, is this the editing department? This is Sally Sampson from the promotions office. I'm waiting for the rough edit of the promotional video still. It was supposed to be sent up by this morning. I'll check to see if it's lying around here, Miss Sampson. Wait a moment, please. No, I don't see it anywhere. Could I please speak with Michael? He was working on it last time I called. He stepped out about 15 minutes ago for lunch. I'll give you his cell phone number so that you can get a hold of him now. Number 56. What is this conversation about? Number 57. Who is Michael? Number 58. What will the woman probably do next? Questions 59 through 61 refer to the following conversation. Margaret, have you seen the textbook I put on the coffee table? I really hope that I didn't leave it in my office as I really need it for tomorrow. I saw Lucy take it and put it into her school bag. Maybe she confused it with one of her own. Why do you need it so badly? I'm preparing a lecture on Roma culture, and this textbook has a very excellent chapter dedicated to the Roma people. Well, I could call the school and ask Lucy to bring the book home during her lunch break. Number 59. Where is the textbook? Number 60. What does the man need the textbook for?
Number 61. What does the woman suggest? Questions 62 through 64 refer to the following conversation. Hello, welcome to West Elgin Agricultural Bank. How may I help you? My name is Peter McKenzie and I'm from Lawrence Automotive. I'd like to transfer $5,000 from our savings account to our credit account. No problem, sir. Can you please give me your account number and secret code? The account number is 9823465 and our secret code is 2121. Also, while you have our account information open in front of you, could you please give me our total balance? Number 62. Where does the woman work? Number 63. What does the man want to do? Number 64. What does the woman ask for? Questions 65 through 67 refer to the following conversation. Dick, I visited the new office site last night. It looks like you have a lot of renovation work still to do. Yes, we're a bit behind schedule because we had so much trouble ordering some of the construction materials. Well, you know that we have to move in by the first of next month, right? That's when we are moving out of our old place. I promise we'll be finished by then. I'll have my crew work overtime to get it done before the beginning of June. Number 65. Who is the man? Number 66. Why has construction been delayed? Number 67. What does the woman expect to do on June 1st? Questions 68 through 70 refer to the following conversation. Do you know if Janice will finish his investigative report before the paper has to be published? I'm not sure. He's still doing some final interviews at City Hall. Is it absolutely essential to include his article in tomorrow's newspaper? No, Brittany has finished with her article on minor league hockey, and we can use her article for tomorrow's issue. Number 68. What are the speakers discussing? Number 69. Where is Janice? Number 70. What does the woman say she will do? Go on to the next page. Part 4. Directions. You will hear some short talks given by a single speaker. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speaker says in each short talk. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The talks will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Questions 71 through 73 refer to the following message. Hello, this message is for Dr. Carl Sagan in the laboratory. This is Dr. Inga Johansson from the Flitch General Hospital. My patient, Juliet Crichton, visited my office two weeks ago complaining of prolonged tiredness so I performed some blood tests. I am still waiting for the results to be delivered to me. Please give me a call to let me know when you send the results. I am afraid they might have been misplaced. My direct number is 7834456. Thank you. Number 71. What is the purpose of the message? Number 72. What is Dr. Johansson worried about? Number 73. What was Juliet Crichton's reason for going to see the doctor?
Questions 74 through 76 refer to the following talk. This will be our last stop of the day. If you look out of the left side of our tour bus, you can see the magnificent Pacific Ocean. We will be visiting Wreck Beach, aptly named for the numerous shipwrecks that have washed ashore here over the past 100 years. Wreck Beach is also the only beach in this city which offers a completely unobstructed view of the sunset, so it is quite a popular place for couples at sundown. Our schedule has been slightly altered for the rest of this afternoon. The local Mariner's Museum has been closed for the day because of a power outage. Thus, instead of today, we visit the museum tomorrow morning if the problem is solved by then. So this means we can all enjoy a sunny, leisurely afternoon on the beach. Number 74. Who most likely is the speaker? Number 75. How does Wreck Beach differ from other beaches? Number 76. What caused the change of schedule? Questions 77 through 79 refer to the following talk. Stay tuned for our interview with Reggie Wicker, author of the popular children's series, Didn't Your Parents Tell You? Mr. Wicker's books have been translated into seven different languages, and he has received the Prescott Award for Children's Literature unprecedented five times. On today's show, Mr. Wicker will describe a typical day in the life of a famous writer and will discuss how his experience working as a telemarketer influenced his stories. Our phone lines are open if you'd like to call in with questions for today's guest. Number 77. What does the speaker say about Mr. Wicker? Number 78. What was Reggie Wicker's previous job? Number 79. What will Reggie Wicker talk about? Questions 80 through 82 refer to the following advertisement. Is your home or business looking somewhat untidy? Are you looking for a home cleaning service with a reasonable price? Then you should immediately call Jesse and Jerry's Cleaning Services. We will arrange a convenient schedule with you and send a professional and competent cleaner to your house or company to help you out immediately. Our fee starts at $30 an hour, which is significantly less than what is charged by other cleaning services in the area. To consult with a customer service agent and obtain a free estimate, please call 843-2222. Number 80. What service does the company provide? Number 81. What advantage to this service is mentioned in the message? Number 82. How can customers request service? Questions 83 through 85 refer to the following announcement. Welcome to the 26th Annual Graham Tolkien Memorial Lecture. This year's guest speaker is the renowned business analyst David Greber. Mr. Greber's talk tonight is entitled, The Power of Branding. Because this event is being broadcast live on the internet, we ask you all to try to refrain from making any unnecessary noise until Mr. Greber is finished with his speech. Also, just a reminder that no food and drinks are permitted within the Great North Auditorium. Refreshments will be served in the front hallway during the intermission period. Number 83. Where is the announcement being made? Number 84. Why is the audience asked to be quiet? Number 85. According to the announcement, what is not permitted?
Questions 86 through 88 refer to the following report. This is Matilda McKay with an AM800 rush hour traffic report. Expressways into the downtown area are particularly troublesome due to the heavy snow we received overnight. Also, if you are traveling eastbound on Willington Avenue, be prepared for delays around Annex Drive and Suffolk Street. A three-car accident likely caused by the icy driving conditions is blocking traffic there. If it is at all possible, we recommend that commuters take public transit this morning to work. Stay tuned for our next traffic report in 15 minutes. Number 86. Who is this report for? Number 87. What caused the problems? Number 88. What does, does the report recommend? Go on to the next page. Questions 89 through 91 refer to the following message. Hi, Diane. It's Paul. I hope everything's okay with you. As you probably know, it is Shelly's birthday on Saturday night. She's been feeling a bit down lately since she missed out on the promotion at work, so I was thinking of throwing a surprise party for her at my house. I don't know what time she gets work done on Saturday, but I'll call her to invite her to my house for a late dinner. Why don't you come by around 5 or 6 p.m.? because we need to decorate my place a bit before she gets here. I've already called the others, and they are all looking forward to it. Number 89. Why does Paul want to throw a party on Saturday? Number 90. What is Paul unsure about? Number 91. What will Paul and his friends probably do first? Questions 92 through 94 refer to the following news report. In local news, the city government has decided to look into the feasibility of constructing a bridge to nearby Pender Island. Although any plans for construction are still years away, the announcement has already caused sharp divisions within the island community. Pointing out the island's magnificent coastline and beaches, the Pender Island Tourism Board welcomes the prospect of more mainland tourists visiting the island for pleasure. However, some local residents feel that a bridge will destroy the community on the island and its cultural uniqueness. We'll have more local news after the weather. Number 92. What is the report about? Number 93. According to the report, what does Pender Island have? Number 94. What do some people expect will happen? Questions 95 through 97 refer to the following message. Hi, Miss Stevens. This is Philip Webster from the Resources Department. I received your email regarding the African cultural event you will be hosting this weekend. I have booked the largest room in the community center, and I have also notified the Equipment and Technical Services Office about your request for a film projector. However, I need to know exactly how many people will be attending by this evening so that I can prepare the proper number of tables and chairs. As this event has received considerable attention in the press over the past couple of days, I expect that there will be a considerable turnout. I look forward to helping you make this inaugural event a great success. Please call me back at my office any time this afternoon. Thank you. Number 95. Why did Mr. Webster call Ms. Stevens? Number 96. What did Ms. Stevens previously request?
Number 97. What does Mr. Webster say about the event? Questions 98 through 100 refer to the following news report. A recent survey by a youth marketing agency shows that the average teenager spends nearly 50% of his or her budget on clothing and other fashion accessories. While the overall economy has been in a recession over the past two years, this hasn't stopped the increase in teen consumption. Many marketing specialists claim that the teen market is their most lucrative demographic, and thus teens are the focus of many ads. Some teenagers, however, resist this type of consumer pressure. They are getting involved in the culture movement, criticizing the corporate fashion and marketing industry. Number 98. What did the survey show? Number 99. What does the speaker suggest about marketers? Number 100. According to the speaker, what are some teenagers doing? This is the end of the listening test.